it has come to light that HRC, better known as Hillary Rodham Clinton, is viewed as the kiss of death for Democratic candidates in this upcoming midterm elections, forcing the former presidential candidate to stay low and campaign only behind closed doors. According to many different reports, not just this one, very few Democrats are willing to embrace Clinton on the campaign trail, despite the party's never-universal support for her just two years ago, with many concerned that a high-profile Clinton presence would only dampen the party's prospects of retaking control of Washington, D.C. from the Republicans. Throughout many midterm elections, Clinton has rarely rallied together with other candidates, appearing mostly at low-key fundraisers. Hillary Clinton is the kiss of death, and she represents the part of the Democratic Party that led to historic losses and that elected President Donald Trump, according to the Washington Examiner. Democrats were relieved after Bill and Hillary Clinton announced that their international 13-city speaking tour wouldn't begin until after November's midterm elections. According to U.S. Senator Dick Durbin, Democrat of Illinois, I think they're measuring how they can have the best, most positive impact and have definitely decided to wait until after the elections. But Hillary Clinton, she's agreeing with the Maxine Waters of the world, it appears. Listen to this next soundbite. She's saying civility is not an option. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's why I believe if we are fortunate enough to win back the House and or the Senate, that's when civility can start again. Well, what does that mean exactly, Kellyanne? Look, she, usually when she opens her mouth respectfully, she offends at least one half of the country and she did it again, but I think her discourse now is a little bit dangerous. I don't like the implications there. It's one thing to call us deplorable, irredeemable, laugh at people who don't have all the privileges that she has had with her Ivy League law degree and through her marriage to a much more popular a man who actually was a two-term president that she'll never be. I don't like that kind of talk and I avoid it. Uh, my, my boss has called for civility. He's said that he represents all Americans. We don't run around asking people what their party affiliation is when he's cutting their taxes and allowing their small businesses to be right. free of regulations and growth. Uh, it's, we're impervious to that. And yet, um, and I want to say something else. I don't see all these Democratic candidates banging down Hillary Clinton's door, I know. asking her She's dying to, to lock matter. arms. She's not, again, she has to go with her right. husband to do this. 13 city tour, 120 million dollars, and I assume bucks, they're not that they're it. not that they're not going to donate to some center on women's and girls. I, I don't see her doing that. So I think it's not just unfortunate and graceless, but a little bit dangerous. And gotcha. I would ask her to check that. In tonight, word from the U.S. State Department that Hillary Clinton is surrendering her top secret security clearance. It comes in the wake of her handling or mishandling of classified information in the now infamous email server scandal. Trace Gallagher is following this breaking story. Just heard about from the State Department the last couple of hours. He's live in our West Coast newsroom. Good evening, Trace. Good evening. This all goes back, of course, to the State Department's ongoing review of the mishandling of classified information related to Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. And it also kind of gives you an idea of how slow some things move in government, because almost a year and a half ago, the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Republican Chuck Grassley, sent the letter to the State Department asking about the status of Hillary Clinton's security clearance. In that letter, Grassley stated that any government workers who possibly engaged in such serious offenses would at the very minimum have their security clearances suspended pending an investigation. Well, three weeks ago, the State Department finally responded to Senator Grassley's 2017 letter saying, quoting here, at her request, former Secretary Clinton's security clearance was administratively withdrawn on August 30th, 2018. The letter went on to say that on September 20th, the security clearances of five other Clinton researchers had also been 
revoked. Only Clinton aide Cheryl Mills was listed. The other four names were redacted. Of course, at the time of the probe, Hillary Clinton was running for president and no charges were filed. This summer, President Trump revoked the security clearance of former CIA director John Brennan. And at the time, the White House said it was reviewing the clearances of several other people. So about 17 months after Grassley sent the letter, he finally got a response from the State Department. Little known to the American people about Hillary Clinton and her Uranium One scandal, this report attempts to explain is that during the 2016 U.S. presidential election, it was under intense investigation by the FBI field offices in New York City, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C., and Little Rock, Arkansas. But when criminal evidence committed by Hillary Clinton was presented by the FBI before top Justice Department officials, they were all met with stern and icy stares and had their evidence outright dismissed, with one of the top-level FBI officials participating in this meeting stating that was one of the weirdest meetings I've ever been to, unquote. Immediately after the Justice Department shot down the FBI's criminal evidence against Hillary Clinton, this report notes that the FBI director, obviously at the time James Comey, then appointed Diane Upchurch to be the FBI's agent in charge of Little Rock. And with Upchurch being the lieutenant of now disgraced former FBI deputy director Andrew McCabe, should have ended this investigation forever. Most unfortunately for Hillary Clinton, though, this report continues, Donald Trump won the U.S. presidency instead of her, and who ordered a new FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's crimes to begin, and that Clinton's chief spokesman, Nick Merrill, excoriated the FBI for reopening the case, calling the probe disgraceful and suggesting it was nothing more than a political distraction from President Trump's Russian controversies. Far from Trump's new investigation into Hillary Clinton being disgraceful or a political distraction, however, this report does note the Inspector General of the Department of Justice, Michael Horowitz, did indeed determine that both the FBI and Justice Department broke the law in their investigation of Clinton during the 2016 U.S. presidential election with his findings then being referred for criminal prosecution and whose final decision was made by in the hands of now the deeply feared and all-powerful U.S. Attorney John Hubber. The most important thing to know about U.S. Attorney John Hubber, this report states, is that he was appointed by Attorney General Jeff Sessions to investigate the investigations of the Obama-Clinton regime with his specifically being ordered by Sessions to investigate the FBI's surveillance of Carter Page and connections between the Clinton Foundation and Uranium One, with Hubber further holding the rare distinction of being the only person President Trump has nominated to have been confirmed to office with a unanimous vote in the United States Senate. To why U.S. Attorney Hubber is so feared that even Trump's worst deep state enemies voted to confirm him, this report explains, is due to him having more power than Special Counsel Robert Mueller and Inspector General Horowitz combined, as Mueller can only focus investigations on so-called Russian collusion matters, and Horowitz is unable to bring any charges against anyone he finds that has violated the law. Equally important to note about U.S. Attorney Hubber this report states is that he is the only U.S. attorney appointed under two administrations, Obama and President Trump, working outside of the politically charged and toxic atmosphere of Washington, D.C., and that the importance of was noted by Hubbard's University of Utah Law School professor and former U.S. federal judge Paul Cassell, who stated, however, this thing comes out, one side or the other will be convinced that the fix was in. You need to find somebody that has respect from both parties and someone who is outside the ordinary political process. So inevitably, to the sheer terror of all of President Trump's enemies, 
in the deep state viewing this past week U.S. Attorney John Hubber supervising the loading onto the Department of Justice's EMP-protected doomsday plane an unknowable number of boxes of evidence against Hillary Clinton in Little Rock, Arkansas, and then bringing them back to Washington, D.C., this report concludes can only be matched by that of Trump himself, who is facing a 2018 midterm election many believe will result in the Democratic Party retaking control of the U.S. Congress, and whose master plan, once the Democrats are back in power supposedly, had been devised by the leftist communist Harvard Law School professor Lawrence Lessig, and whose outline is, number one, once the Democrats supposedly regain control of the U.S. House, and as yet unnamed U.S. congressperson from New York will resign. Number two, New York State Democratic Party Governor Andrew Cuomo will then appoint Hillary Clinton to fill this vacancy. Number three, the Democratic Party-controlled U.S. House will elect Hillary Clinton to be the House Speaker, thus putting her third in line of presidential succession. Number four, both President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence will be quickly impeached and thrown from office, making Hillary Clinton the 46th President of the United States. What a laugh! So, ladies and gentlemen, this is just further evidence that President Trump is the right person in the office, just like congressmen and senators and Hollywood actors and actresses who can't stand President Trump. It's only because they have something to lose because he's in office, because he will tell you the truth. He will tell you what's been going on and what these crazy, loony, liberal lunatics have been getting away with for decades. <music>